In respect of countermeasures that you have just heard Professor Schmidt refer to in the Articles of State Responsibility, they provide in Articles 51 and 52 that such countermeasures must be proportionate and that notice must be given prior to any invocation of such countermeasures. Such a requirement for proportionality may be manifested in relation to a hack back, a reciprocal response through similar mechanisms, but this is not without its ambiguity. The question of notice is equally potentially problematic in understanding what is required in giving such notice. What is a reasonable notice to provide in such circumstances where actions are taken instantaneously? What do the Articles on State Responsibility provide for in this instance? Can urgency, for example, be an excuse not to provide such notice? The answer to that question is actually yes. Article 52.2 of the Articles provide that an injured state may take urgent countermeasures as are necessary to preserve its rights. This raises the issue of attribution. In undertaking a response, states need to be clear as to the origin of the cyber operation and also the connection of the target and the state. Significantly, the question of attribution is one that comes up frequently in this field, but is also one that can be often overstated as being problematic. Listen next to what Emma Lovett, a cyber expert, has to say on this issue. There are a number of ways that attribution can be verified in practice. In the next clip, you will hear her speak about the reasoning process that goes into triangulating the origin of an attack and the identifying signatures that code can reveal in establishing attribution. As we know, the internet takes packages of information and disperses them and then assembles them again at the other end where you want them to arrive. Being able to say with certainty what bits of the world they went through and who was making them go through there is the attribution part. So it's not so much about determining exactly where these little bits and bytes were at a particular time. It's being able to say, we think country alpha was attacked by country Yankee because we know there were, for example, six servers that it went through. We know that two of them were in country tango, country uniform. But before we get to country Yankee, we, we lose a couple of servers. We don't get the whole trail. So how do you come to a point where I can be certain, very high con confidence in my attribution? And I want a high confidence. If I'm saying that country Yankee has done something contrary to my state sufficient to be equivalent to an armed attack, contrary to my interests, and I want to respond with force, whether it's cyber or not. And may I just add, you're not going to get kinetic attacks without cyber in this world, just saying. Um, so how do I get from here to here when I've got a gap? I'm also going to be looking at the character of the attack, because the nice thing about being attacked is you get to have the time, the luxury to pull apart the code, the programming, and you get a feel for where it comes from. There, there are identities that become apparent. So you can say, well, this is the sort of work that comes from this region of the world. Why? Because they speak a certain language and that's the way their brains work. Even though computer language is its own thing, we still have our own ethnic tendencies. Um, that's the sort of thing that would we think come from there. Then you add the political overlay of why it would be that country. And if this were an intelligence anal ana analysis, you add one, two, three, and four, and the character, attribution. More likely than not, 